Hi students, this is a really, really quick introduction to lighting. I, I decided to just have you use the same scene you were using earlier, um, just to give you a quick run through of basic lighting in a scene. And one of my favorite lights to use, because um, it's a nice, uh, simple light that can be used for a variety of purposes. And so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, before we start with lighting, um, I would like to uh, show you what's called the rendering window. Some of you may have already clicked on this. Uh, before you click on it, I just would like to mention that when you render, uh, you are going to render out whatever the viewport that you have selected is. So make sure that you have perspective selected and we click render and there we go. Very exciting, right? Um, so you can see it doesn't look uh, that much different than uh, the way it looks in the viewport, and that's mainly because we haven't really added any textures or special materials to it, and um, it's also using the exact same default lighting uh, that the viewport has, and that's because uh, we haven't told it to use any lighting. So 3ds Max will light your scene with default lighting until you place a light in the scene, at which time things will start to change a little bit. So uh, in our uh, list of things over here in our Create tab, we can hop over to the Lights section and we want to make sure that we're in the standard list. And in there is a bunch of things, but one of them is called the Omni Light. And I'm going to place an Omni Light in my scene. And if I zoom out, you'll see it has a um, like thing around it. And that's because I actually um, was playing around in here and there's some stuff that I changed. So if I go over to the Modify tab, I can um, show you why this is like that. So that little circle, what that's showing is the decay of the light. And by decay, we mean in real life, for example, when you flip on a flashlight and you aim it off into the distance, eventually that light spreads out and disperses and you don't see it anymore. Uh, so when we talk about decay in a light in 3D Studio Max, we can define the point at which the light begins to degrade and fade away. So um, for the moment, I'm gonna turn all of this off um, and just kind of show you what it's gonna look like. And just to give you an idea, um, you should be putting this light in your scene as well. From the top, um, from the side, this is our little light symbol, and that's great. So let's do one more thing under general parameters. Let's make sure that shadows are turned on. All right, now let's render it again. Okay, so now we can see that since that light is to the left, um, it's casting a shadow over the side of the teapot there. Now, there's a few things we can do. Um, we can change the color of the light, and you can get some pretty wacky results by changing the color, so you can practice that real quick. Um, see how that changed the whole um, look of that there by adding a color. I'm going to switch it back to just plain white. Um, we can put a decay on it, and depending on, so first I'm going to make it huge so that the teapot is well within this um, border, let's say, and we will render it real quick. Okay, looks pretty much like it did before. But if we bring our little um, decay thing down and we make it really small and our teapot is outside of it, see how it's really dim? And that simulates that whole idea of um, light scattering and decreasing as it travels. So unlike in the real world, uh, we can control the behavior of our light using a slider. So um, if we bring that little border right up to the edge of where the teapot is, um, we can get kind of a candlelit effect. Well, if we change the color, I mean. Um, but you can see as you change the size of that DK uh, start point, you get a slightly different um, effect of your shadow and the way the teapot is lit up. So there's plenty of stuff we can do in here, but I don't want to get in the weeds with it. Uh, another thing we can do, actually I had my shadows set on a lower density um, because I was playing around earlier. So yours is going to show the number one here. So let's take a look at what it looks like when our shadows are at one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because when it's far away, it's kind of hard to see. So you can see that that dark 
is really dark. And in real life, shadows tend to be not that dark, right? When something has a shadow, it doesn't get totally black. So putting a value of like 0.7 in for your shadow density is actually going to um, lighten it up and give a little bit of a degrade. Um, so there you go. So that's the OmniLight. And just for ha-ha's, because I know many of you guys are probably going to want to experiment with it, so I'll say go for it. Uh, let's try the spotlight. Spotlight's fun. So if you don't want to use a light, so for example, if we're done with this Omni light for now, instead of deleting it, you can actually just switch it off. And you'll notice that once we do that, see how it's black? So that tells you that that light is off. Now watch what happens when we render. We see nothing because now our scene has a light in it that's powered off. So let's put another light in our scene. Let's do a targeted spotlight. So this can be very dramatic. Oops, and creating these in the perspective viewport is very, very tricky, so let's not do that. Let's use the front viewport. So we're going to click and we're going to drag down, okay? So you can see that this light is different. Um, the source is up here, and then we have this cone to show where our spotlight, this is our target. So we actually have two things we can move on this light. We can move the light itself, and we can say where it's pointing. So this is a um, very versatile light. So let's see what it looks like. I'm going to hop over to the modify list and notice I don't have any parameters selected. That's because um, the target doesn't really have any things you can do with it. So I'm going to click up here onto the spotlight itself and now we have things we can do with it. So let's take a quick look. Let's do a quick render here and see how dramatic um, our teapot tower of craziness looks. So I'm going to zoom in a little more and we can do the same thing that we did before. We can turn on shadows and we can also um, change the size of our spotlight. So we can actually, if you take a look, you can see that if I bring that hot spot down, whoop, that was too far. And the reason that it didn't look like it affected it that much is because that fall off, which is that second cone that shows some of the scattered light. I'm going to make that smaller too. Look at that weirdness. Okay. We can also change the size of our beam and make it a rectangle. Doesn't really show much in terms of this, but let me show you one of the main things that the spotlight does, just like a real spotlight. If we were to add a plane at the base of our scene, right, and we go over here and we render it, now things start getting to look really weird. So notice, take a look at what we see. So notice we have our rectangular border made here, and we also have a very thin, narrow beam. So we don't see any light leaking out. This does not look very realistic. So I'm actually going to switch our light back to a circle, because most spotlights are circles. I'm also going to make the beam bigger. I'm going to make that fall off bigger. And now we're going to take a quick look and we're going to render that out. And there you have it. So now you got a nice shadow forming down here. And notice how the edge of our beam is fuzzy. So the more we give it that fall off, the more of that fuzzy edge we're going to see. Okay. And that's going to give us that more realistic look. And in terms of our shadow parameters, Another thing we can do also is we can change the color of our shadows, which can cause really weird things to happen. So for fun, let's make our shadows purple for a second. So that's kind of cool. So you can do things to make your scene more realistic or unrealistic. Uh, things can be achieved in here that can't be achieved in real life. So again, very simple lighting. Before we wrap up, let's watch what happens if we turn our Omni light back on. So now we have two lights in our scene, 
And so we have the spotlight coming in from the top and then we have our Omni light out front. And let's see what that's gonna look like. All right, so now we have two, the combination of both lights. So you can see that our plane is far more illuminated. And also now, since we have lights moving from two different sides of the scene, from the top, from the side, um, our shadows on the plane have gotten diluted. Uh, so, and let's just for fun do one more change. And let's make our Omni light blue. very crazy looking effects. So one thing I want you to notice is how the Omni light is low in the scene. So if we imagine the light coming out of our little bulb here and hitting the teapot, you can see that that blue light is really only hitting the surfaces that are facing that Omni light. Uh, the top of the teapot, the top of the handle um, are not blue because the light is being sent this way so it's not actually hitting the top whereas the light that's coming down from the spotlight is actually what's hitting the top of the teapot and that's why the whole teapot doesn't appear to be blue. So depending on the placement of your lights, the type of lights, the color of your lights, the way that you set up your shadows, uh, you can achieve some pretty interesting effects. And um, we aren't going to use, we might use an Omni light in our snowman scene just to do a little bit of basic lighting. But what we'll do in the future is we will work with some uh, photorealistic light that simulates sunlight and shadows. So that's going to give us an even more photorealistic effect um, than uh, what we're achieving now with the basic settings on spotlight and Omni light. That's it.